Today we present the translation of an interview with Luz de Maria de Bonilla. The interviewer states, Good morning, Luz de Maria. Thank you for agreeing to this interview. Luz de Maria responds, Thanks to the forms of the Virgin Mary for sharing my experiences from another point of view. The interviewer asks, Some say that you are from Costa Rica, others that you live in Argentina. Which is true? Luz de Maria responds, Basically, I was born in Costa Rica, but I live part-time in Argentina and part-time in Costa Rica. Though due to the mission, I'm constantly traveling, so I consider myself a citizen of the world. The interviewer asks, how would you define your mission in this world? Luz de Maria responds, the mission that has been entrusted to me by God is to transmit the divine word as God wishes, sharing the messages I receive. This is so humanity understands that the great love God has for us must rule the behavior of man. I see myself like the tip of the pen with which heaven writes the explanation of his divine word to humanity. The mission demands a great spiritual responsibility because I must fulfill the divine plan so that his word reaches the greatest number of our brothers and sisters. I have to preach on time and in time so that no more souls are lost. Christ has spoken to me and has expressed the following. Beloved daughter, your mission is to achieve the unity of your brothers and sisters, that they recognize me as their Lord and their God. The interviewer asks, what has been your formation or education? Uh, what has your family been like? Luz de Maria responds, I've had the blessing to pursue higher studies in the university and to graduate. In addition, I've studied a bit of modern languages, although I did not complete a degree in them. I took a basic course in theology, and I've been a catechist for baptism, for First Communion, and for the Sacrament of Confirmation in my community. My family has been a great foundation upon which I was shaped. My grandmother was a person with deep Catholic roots, and my parents too. With this footing, my family was formed, and therefore they have lived Calvary with me. They know what the life of a prophet is like because Christ appointed me that way. They know the pain of being singled out and other moments which are not pleasant for anyone. They have lived out intense moments in their own flesh because the word is fulfilled. No one is a prophet in his own land. But they also know of the joy that leads us to live as in the wedding of Cana. The interviewer asks, do you receive divine messages? Whose messages are these? Luz de Maria responds, I do receive divine messages from Christ, from our mother, from St. Michael the Archangel, and occasionally I have received messages from some saints. And what I receive, I have a moral and spiritual duty to make known. I know that I am a transmitter of that word, and I thank God, always asking that my brothers and sisters pray for me so that I remain faithful. The interviewer asks, how can you be sure that these messages are from Jesus Christ or from the Virgin Mary? What is it that leads you to have certainty? Luz de Maria responds, I know that they are them because they exhale love, that love that cannot come from a place other than heaven, because I know and I recognize them, because his word is of life and not of death, because from the beginning they spoke clearly about the explanation of the divine word, and our mother told me that the father sends her to reveal to me what leads my brothers and sisters to conversion through his calls. I am certain that they are Christ and our mother, because I have never received words contrary to the love of God, nor contrary to the faith. Indeed, it is a constant search for souls, a constant call to conversion. I know that God has not ceased to intervene in the history of salvation, therefore he gives the revelations. The interviewer asks, how long have you received those messages? Luz de Maria responds, the beginning of my mission was on March 19, 1992. I have now been receiving messages from heaven for 25 years. I receive the messages in prayer, which we do with a group of brothers and sisters. The messages are recorded by two people. They're transcribed by a religious sister and a priest makes spelling corrections. Another priest reviews them before they are uploaded to the page revelacionesmarianas.com in order to share them. 
The interviewer asks, do you see Jesus and Mary with your own eyes or do you hear the messages in your mind? Lucy Maria responds, at the beginning, our mother spoke to me in my mind. She initiated the mission in this way. As the first disciple of her son, she then came to explain the purpose of the mission and the objective of the mission. She allowed me to look at that beauty that enraptured me. I have never looked at so much beauty. It is the essence of love. Several months later, our mother prepared me to receive her son, Jesus Christ. Christ allowed me to see his eyes with my physical eyes. And there I was in front of them, in front of true love, where time stops and everything that exists around you ceases to exist, and you are enraptured. You do not listen to anything else. You do not look at anything else. You surrender without resisting, as if magnetized by that divine perfection of love before you, to which you can only say, my Lord and my God. This is how I see with my physical eyes our Lord and our Mother. And I listen to them not with my bodily ears, but directly in my heart, in my thoughts, when they speak to me. The interviewer asks, what was the first apparition you had like? When was it? Luz de Maria responds, the first apparition I had was with the Blessed Mother. I had been feeling her close to me. When I was praying, I felt it was her. The first apparition was surprising because my physical body was feeling the supernatural closeness of our mother. My heart beat faster, but in peace. My thoughts held me to her. Then I saw a silhouette that was suspended in the air. It gave me total peace. And at the same time, I felt a happiness that I had not felt before. Then that figure, the silhouette, approached me. And on my knees, I looked at it. Everything that was around me disappeared, and only she and I remained. The interviewer asks, and how are they evolving later? Luz de Maria responds, after that first appearance, I paid attention to several things. Before our mother's arrival, I would feel a soft wind and unusual peace. Our mother came to me more often, once a week, but I felt close to her even if I did not see her forever. On some occasions, I looked at her and she disappeared. And when I did not see her, I felt very sad but my mother taught me to wait, to be patient, to act calmly. It's something you can never get used to. Each time is like the first. The first messages of the mother were more formative for when our Lord Jesus Christ came. It was a one-year process, and then the expected day arrived. Our mother, next to St. Michael the Archangel, introduced me to our Lord. They are marvels of divine mercy that one carries imprinted upon the soul, and they can never be forgotten. With the passage of time, the messages ceased to be private and passed into public order. The interviewer asks, how does Mary appear physically, and how does Jesus appear physically? Luz de Maria responds, to me, the Lord appears at a height of one meter 90. His complexion is bronzed, like looking at a person who has been in the sun, and his skin shines with an olive color. His hair is light brown, very light but not blonde, and wavy, with a length that passes the height of the shoulders. His beard does not extend beyond the profile of his face. His eyes have a honey color with coffee, a bit dark, which makes his look very penetrating and with an unparalleled symmetry. I say that the eyes, they have the shape of an almond, adorned by perfect eyebrows bordering the upper edge of their eyes. It always catches my attention. His nose is long, but at the same time, it is not at all out of proportion, but makes him seem like what he is, perfection. His lips are elongated, uh, his body is slender, and I always see him in a tunic. About our mother, I can say that I look at her in all her beauty, enhanced in her eyes because they radiate light like the sun itself. Her gaze is profound, loving, and at the same time she scrutinizes one's heart, one's thoughts, one's feelings, everything. Her eyes are very beautiful, honey-colored like her son's, but they are lighter than the color of our Lord's eyes. The perfection of her eyes immediately captures one's attention, because with them I feel that she speaks. 
They have the almond shape. Her skin is like porcelain, dark and luminous, and her cheeks have a pink hue. It seems to me that the divine sculptor extracted from the roses that pink tone that our mother possesses in her cheeks. Her mouth is small. Her hair is brown and wavy. She appears to be about 24 years old. Our mother wears different colors. I realized that the color of the dress is in accord with the call she wishes to give to humanity. On a few occasions, I have seen her dressed in black, but it was when catastrophes happened. She always wears a cloak over her tunic and a ribbon at her waist. The interviewer asks, "Have you also received the stigmata? What are the stigmata like, and when do they occur?" Lucy Maria responds, "Yes, I have. I received the stigmata on Good Friday. Previously, our Lord Jesus Christ had prepared me for a particular ceremony, and after that came the mystical betrothal." Our Lord does not give what one does not wish to accept, and He asked me if I wanted to participate in His sufferings. I answered affirmatively, and then, after a day of continuous prayer at night, Christ presented Himself to me on the cross, and He shared His wounds. It was an indescribable pain, although I know that, however painful it may be, it is not the totality of the pain that Christ continues to suffer for humanity. Mystical stigmata are invisible most of the time, but no less painful. On several occasions during the year, they become visible: on the hands, on the side, on the feet, and the crown of thorns from which blood flows. The interviewer asks, "Is there a special aroma that occurs, or some special events in your life in those days?" Lucy Maria responds, "Actually, the people who are present when I am with the Passion." They experience an odor that is characteristic of that instant. The blood is perfumed with a heavenly smell, which is not apparent only where we are, but comes out and inundates the whole place. When some painful event is going to happen for humanity, or during Holy Week, I always receive that blessing of accompanying our Lord on the cross. The interviewer asks, "If you had to define it roughly." What is the main content of the messages you receive? Luz de Maria responds. Broadly speaking, I define the content of the messages and the existence of the messages as the expression of the infinite love of God toward humanity. Conversion is the center of the messages, that no more souls may be lost than those that have been lost. That thinking of the man who imagines that everything is easily forgiven is. Lukewarm or tepid, because to have the forgiveness of sins, we have to feel pain for having offended God, and see and measure the intensity how sin affects our path of conversion. Every disobedience takes us backwards in the path we lead, and it is precisely the conversion to become aware of what eternal salvation means, which leads us to fear sin. Not only praying with words, but in the praxis of each moment, thus giving testimony and summoning our brothers. The interviewer asks, "What is your relationship with the Catholic Church?" Luz de Maria responds, "My relationship is good, without privileges, but also without problems. I belong to the Third Order of the Augustinians." The interviewer asks, "As a Catholic, what do you think of the New Age?" Lucy Maria responds, "Christ and our Mother speak to us with forcefulness regarding the contradictions and falsehoods of the New Age, so that we stay alert and do not get into confusion. According to what I receive, I have been led to understand that the New Age is a weapon of the devil to divert the people of God. It has attractive aspects for man who, at this moment, wants to penetrate the unknown. Quite a bit of the terminology that this sect uses." Is taken from our Catholic religion, and they have been given without resistance. Therefore, my position with respect to the New Age is that it totally disagrees with my principles. The interviewer asks, "On the official side of the apparitions, Marian revelations, it is said that you are guided by some priests and religious. Could you explain to me who supports you?" Luz de Maria responds, "Because heaven moves hearts, since the mission began." 
We have had the presence of priests throughout these 25 years. We are currently supported by priests from various countries. In the mission, there are two permanent priests. Father Jose Maria Rojas uh, serves as my spiritual director, and there are two sisters, one of whom is a theologian. The interviewer asks, and do the messages have some kind of approval from a bishop? Luz de Maria responds, we have the imprimatur of Bishop Juan Abelardo Mata of Nicaragua, who, after reading all the content of the messages from 2009 to September 2017 and prayer books, found nothing against faith or sound doctrine. In addition, the Bishop Emeritus of San Vicente El Salvador, Monsignor Jose Oscar Barajona Castillo, gave us an imprimatur for the prayer of the Holy Spirit. The interviewer asks, is there any kind of prophecy in the messages that has been fulfilled? Luz de Maria responds, yes. Unfortunately, there have been many prophecies that have been fulfilled, although it should be noted that I am never given dates. One of the most resounding has been the attack on the Twin Towers, which they made known to us eight days before. Another was the earthquake in Japan in 2011, where heaven announced this tragedy a year earlier and on repeated occasions. On the day after the earthquake, Mother again warned that the danger was not over. The water continues in its path. The prayer for Japan should not lessen, intensify it. These are the words of the Blessed Virgin on December 3rd, 2011. And we saw how the situation had not yet finished because the atomic power station at Fukushima exploded. Heaven also announced the two earthquakes in Chile, the Bio Bio earthquake of 8.8 .8 in 2010 and the one in 2015 in Coquimbo with an intensity of 8.3. Ecuador's earthquake on April 16th, 2016 with a magnitude of 7.8 was also announced a few months before. The earthquake on August 24th, 2016 in L'Aquila, Amatrice in Italy was announced a few weeks before. Recently, on September 19th, 2017, there was an earthquake in Mexico of 7.1 degrees, and our Blessed Mother told us on September 13th, 2017, pray, my children, pray for Mexico. The sin that overflows in this nation leads to suffering. These are the words of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And there are hundreds of prophecies fulfilled, covering not only events of nature, but also related to the political, social, economic, and religious spheres, that is, events that destabilize peace and the order of humanity. Everything is published and it's easy to corroborate it. The interviewer asks, how often do you receive the messages? Luz de Maria responds, I usually receive messages for humanity twice a week or sometimes once a week. I also receive other messages such as personal preparation about events that humanity will face. In addition, the personal instruction is continuous. The interviewer asks, is there some kind of predictability or planning with Jesus and Mary about when to receive the messages or do they occur unexpectedly? Luz de Maria responds, hours before the time when they will give me a message, I feel a special call, something that occurs in me and announces that they will give me a message. I feel a, a different beating in my heart. But this can happen one day and the message is given to me another day or the same day. I do not know the time. It is in God's time. The interviewer asks, have the Virgin or Jesus given you any secret messages that you cannot reveal or things you've been told to reveal in the future when certain things happen, as is the case, for example, with the secrets that the Virgin gave to the seers of Medjugorje? Luz de Maria responds, I have been given five secrets. As they are secrets, I cannot reveal them until our Lord Jesus Christ or our mother asks me to do so. Not all are catastrophes. These secrets also contain two that are for the blessing of humanity. One of them has to do directly with humanity's recognition of the Blessed Mother. The first secret was fulfilled when our mother wept tears of blood in Argentina. This happened in February 2016. Our mother had mentioned to me that as a part of that first secret, Argentina would soon begin to experience very intense attacks of the forces of nature as well as very serious socio-political complications. The day when Mother wept blood began that moment for Argentina. I know from the revelations that very strong acts are going to happen in Argentina 
and that they will then be repeated with greater intensity in the world. The interviewer asks, What is the Blessed Virgin asking us in these times? Lucy Maria responds, Our Blessed Mother asks us to understand, in all its magnitude, what it truly means to be Christians, which is not something limited to prayer, nor to understand it as a historical fact, but rather we have to live fused to Christ and live and work in the divine will. She tells me not to pray with unconscious and empty repetitive sentences, but rather to pray for a closer, more intimate union with our Lord, so that the prayer reaches an infinite value. She also asks us to know Christ and recognize Him. That's why He calls us to the study of sacred scripture, so that we do not concede to what is not divine will. I have mentioned in the messages that we cannot say that we have faith if we do not act with charity, with love, with respect, with understanding, with hope. That is to say, live with the awareness that we are creations of God. The interviewer asks, And what things are you warning us about that may happen in the future? Luz de Maria responds, We are warned about what our mother has mentioned in other recognized apparitions. The disobedience of man to the divine law has led him to ally with evil and act against God. They warn us about communism and its apex, war and the use of nuclear weapons, pollution, famine, pestilence, rebellions and social discontent, as well as moral depravity, the schism in the church, the fall of the world economy, the public appearance and world dominion of the Antichrist, the fulfillment of the warning, the miracle and the great punishment, the fall of an asteroid and the change of terrestrial geography, among other announcements. The above is not to frighten, but to urge man to turn his gaze toward God. Prayer from the heart, together with change in the work and actions of man, can manage to prevent some of what we are being warned about. These things can minimize the fulfillment of those prophecies. Not all the announcements are of calamity. There is also the resurgence of the true faith, the unity of the people of God, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and the final triumph of Christ, the King of the universe, where divisions will no longer exist, but we will be one people in God. The interviewer says, Thank you, Luz de Maria. And she responds, at your service. Thank you for your support, and may the Immaculate Heart of Mary be your refuge. Amen.